when I was a kid growing up in the early 90s, I had a friend, he visited the States and he went to Chicago. And then there in Chicago, there was something called a FASA Virtual Center. It was like a simulation pod. And you could make believe that you were piloting a battle mech. And so to a 10-year-old kid at that time, you're hearing about this pod, it sounded amazing. The immersive capabilities of that pod were something that, for me, I couldn't imagine. Uh, and it sounded so good. And I was so envious of that friend that got to play in the FASA Virtual Center. This is my LG32 monitor, which I reviewed before, and you know I love this monitor so much. But you wonder, like you're playing a game on a standard monitor, and it's so good already. But a part of you wonders, like, can it be even better if you're surrounded by the game? Like the sound is in your ears, and you look around, and you can see the birds in the trees, and you can see your enemies in the field, and you really wonder if you're a gamer, like, just how good is this immersion? We will be reviewing today the HTC Vive. The installation is a bit difficult. For one, it's not like you're installing software. The Vive comes with two light boxes because it tracks your movements, it tracks where you are so that it can mimic your position in game. So it does come with two light boxes that you will need to mount above your playing area. You can either mount them on tripods, that's the easy way to do it, or you can drill into your wall and screw them in, which is what I did for my setup because I don't have room for a tripod setup. There, there are a lot of wires involved in the HTC Vive, so you're going to need to hook up cables to your graphics card and then to a central hub. And then that central hub goes to the Vive headset. So at this point, the instructions are straightforward, but you don't want to screw up the order because screwing up the order leads to a lot of bad things and it led to some system instability for me. And it wouldn't play until I had to redo the entire thing again. So you do need to follow the instructions very carefully. It's not idiot-proof, but it's not as hard as assembling your own rig. Another thing about installation of the Vive is that you need a physical space. So, should be free of any obstacles, I'm gonna click next. And you'll notice that it can see everything in real time. If you move the track, the one here, you'll notice the screen, it also moves. So now it's telling me to trace the space that I'm gonna be playing in. So I'm gonna take this one. And you'll notice that there are marks on the wall, sorry, on the screen, as I trace the digit, the physical space. I'm telling the system that this is where I can play and there are no obstacles here. And you'll notice that it's nicely reflected on screen. The path that I am um, drawing out or tracing out. So we are telling the system that this is the space we have to work with. And it'll tell you, is this enough space? Yes. But again, you notice, I remember I previously said I cheated. I passed the one over the desk. So I, I enlarged my playing area, even though that part of the desk, I can't physically move in. So. Pro tip if you want to do that, but do it at your own risk because you run the risk of smashing into your desk and into any monitors that you might have on the desk. The last thing about the headset, there is a rather thick wire trailing out of it and there's nothing we can do about that. It gets really annoying when you're playing a game and then suddenly you can feel the wire against your leg or you, worse you trip over it or it happened to me one time that I yanked out, out the wires from the graphics card because I, I moved too far out and then the, the wire was trailing and I pulled it by accident so I didn't notice because I was in-game. And there's actually a wireless adapter now that HTC sells but and it, it will make your Vive headset truly wireless so you can be moving around without this bulky, cumbersome wire trailing behind you. The problem is it's expensive, it's almost as much as the Vive itself. 
So uh, we don't have any in stock in Hardware Sugar. I would love to try it out because the wire really breaks the immersion. You'll notice that there are a lot of buttons that you can press. They really try to integrate as much interaction as possible into the touch sensors. This is a touch display. So you don't need to press it. You, can, you just need to move your fingers around it and you can interact with it. Good for scrolling up or down or selecting left and right. This is also a button as well, so that's dual function. There is the usual trigger grip. And then there are the grip buttons so that you can activate, let's say, a sword by using the grip and things like that. Notice that these ones come with a blue lanyard. That indicates that they're the second version of the HTC Vive. We only source the updated version, the ones with the blue lanyards, because they're newer, the headsets are slightly lighter and things like that. There is a latest generation of Vive, the Vive Pro, and we don't have that in stock yet. Setup complete! So setup is complete and the Vive should be... Pro tip as well, if you have a dual monitor setup like mine, it super does not like having the second monitor on. It's gonna crash whatever it is you're running eventually. I mean it'll run at first but I've noticed after hours it'll just suddenly crash. So I turn off the second monitor when I'm in VR. So the VR is good to go. You just need Steam and then there will be Steam VR and that's what you will interact with to get your games and things like that. So I'm gonna run Steam VR. And actually you should see, you should be able to see here, oops, Steam error. <laughs> Error occurred while updating the Steam app. Is it already running? Can I see it? Oh, I'm sorry, because it's already running. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but that's sort of like your living room in the Steam VR space. And that's why it gave me an error, because it told me you're an idiot, I'm already running. So I know I look very silly now, but uh, believe me, I'm seeing something much different for what you can see. It's sort of like a living room type setup, yeah. And that's how you interact with the screens. And this is the game that I'm pointing forward. And I need to physically walk forward. Just make sure I'm not going to bump anything. Ah, sorry. Yeah, I can... Forgot it how to maneuver. I can jump around in VR. I don't need to physically walk. But I need to physically take this and... See, again, this is the sort of interaction that um, I was describing earlier. To actually physically bend down and gain things. And there you go. If you can see the robot dog over there, I can bend down and I can play with it. Okay. You can see I'm petting the dog. And the dog likes that. This is the space shooter game I was telling about. And again, this is the wonkiness of VR. I don't when I first played this, I didn't know how to access this. I'm like, I'm holding it, I'm holding it. What, what are I gonna do? Finally you just move it to your face and it brings you to the game. Not, you know, again, not an intuitive um, way of accessing things. Ah, so here is defend your ship, pick up the ship to start game. So you pick up the ship, and your this is now your ship, and we'll trigger the second mode. Let's just go with classic. Do you notice the ship moves in 3D? Oh, and it automatically fires, so these are my enemies. And I have to make sure that I don't bump into that. Oh, see, there's my desk. But, you know, you know, oh, and see. I can. You can maneuver around. See, I'm doing a loop, the loop around. The, oh, shoot. The enemy fire, and you can go like this. And, and all that stuff. And I know I look silly, but it's really quite immersive in game with all of the graphics and the pew 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 sounds. And, and it really gets intense because you gotta dance around. He said, oh, and there's a power up, no, you gotta dodge that, you gotta dodge that. And there are bosses. And this is just one game, it comes free with, with the with the vibe, uh, courtesy of Valve. Lucas Arts came out with a game, they call it Trials of Tatooine, and you're a young Padawan, and basically you don't do much. You're just grounded in one spot on Tatooine, and there are stormtroopers firing at you, and you have a lightsaber, and of course you deflect the bolts. Not AAA plus development time spent on this. When you see the Millennium Falcon screaming over you and then the Falcon lands beside you, for just like a split second, you feel like you're in the Star Wars universe. You feel like, yes, 
God damn it, you're a Padawan, you have a lightsaber and this blue thing waving in front of you, that's really deflecting laser blades. So even if I'm in, in the virtual game, I have to be aware that the wire is behind me. I need to be aware... Wow, look at this guy. Really splattered fire. I need to be aware where the wall is, where the desktop, you know, where the desk is. I don't want to ram the touch screen, touch one into the monitor. So it's better really if you have a stack, you know, you have lots of space to play in. You do have a standing option. Uh, I noticed when you set it up, I had forgotten that. But a lot of the games ask you to, you know, to have a space that you can move around in. The dog has watched me many times play. It's used to, it's used to me being silly. Whoop. I died. <laughs> there is one guy over here that I didn't see. So. Uh, that's really how it's like in VR. I mean, you can't see anything else of the real world. It's it's all like what you saw on the screen. Um, but you really need to. It's really different when you play with it. And you're physically dodging and weaving, and that's just one game. That's just even a free game, and you can. I mean, you can spend hours like trying to master the weaves and the music and things like that. But um, so again, just to highlight. Do I think this is worth it? Yeah, it's a pretty trippy experience. And um, if you want one, hardware sugar selling HTC Vive. VR is frustrating, but it's equally surprising and it's equally amazing. It, personally, for me, it blew me away the level of interaction and the level of how much you feel you're there in game. Is it worth it? I mean, the Vive is a bit expensive, even if the ones we're selling are second hand. They're second hand, but we test them ourselves and we make sure that everything is working before we sell them to you. And we, they all come with our one year warranty, so no worries on that front. Again, you can be assured that you buy from hardware sugar is quality. So let's go back to the vibe. It's expensive, but is it worth it? Um, yeah, it is for me. It's really an example of a device, a product that we wouldn't sell if we didn't believe in. Um, to be honest, I find it super cool that you can be a Padawan on Tatooine and watch the Falcon fly over you. I never got to play in the FASA Center to go back to my story about my friend who went to Chicago. He was lucky enough to play, to imagine, to make believe that he was a bottleneck warrior. I may not have gotten to play in a FASA virtual center, but now that we have home-based VR here, and again, we're late. I mean, this is technology they've had in the States. It's been available for a couple of years now. And again, you know, we're, we're only catching up or it's only becoming available now. And you know, all of these regrets and like, you hear about all these cool things, Oculus, Vive, and things like that. But at the end of the day, is it worth it to flop down a significant amount of money? I mean, you can buy your own rig for what this Vive would cost. And is it worth it? Um, in my honest opinion, yes. Yes, it is. You know, it makes you feel like a kid again. It makes you feel like you're make-believing that you're the guy storming the castle, that you're the hero gunslinger clearing out the Wild West and things like that. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.